everyone! In celebration of our May comic explosion box, we thought it'd be a lot of fun to share some of our favorite graphic novels and comics with you. So without further ado, let's get into it! The first pick on my list is Mighty Jack by Ben Hatke, who is also the author of Zeta the Spice Girl, which is another fantastic middle grade graphic novel you should check out. So Mighty Jack is a retelling of the classic fairy tale Jack and the Beanstalk, but in this version Jack has traded his mother's car for a box full of beans that have been promised to change his life forever. Jack's little sister Maddie plays an important role in this book. Uh, she doesn't speak, but as the seeds come to life, so does Maddie. So they quickly discover that as the plants start to grow, they have very exciting magical properties, but some of them are quite dark. This one ends on a cliffhanger, but the second book comes out on September 5th, so we don't have too long to wait. So I have Hyperbole and a Half by Ali Brosh, and I think the little blurb on the front of this book pretty much sums it up, and it says, unfortunate situations, flawed coping mechanisms, mayhem, and other things that happened. Ali Brosh has run a really popular blog online for years now, and this book is a collection of some of her more popular comics that she's drawn, but there's also some new ones in here, and it essentially acts as a graphic memoir. This book is legitimately the funniest book I have ever read in my entire life, and I do not say that lately, like, this had me crying. It was so funny. Most of this book isn't terribly deep or anything like that, but it does explore Ali's struggle with mental illness, like anxiety and depression, and trying to bring herself out of that, but in a really, really hilarious way. She also discusses simple things, like her dog, which she calls a simple dog because he's not very smart, um, her husband, moving across the country, and just life snippets, and it's really hilarious, and I urge you to pick it up. So one graphic novel that I absolutely have to mention is Black Hole by Charles Byrne. This was actually the very first graphic novel I ever bought, and so it will always be very special to me. Now this story is extremely weird, so I'm going to read the dust jacket for you because there's no way I could summarize it better. So it says, The setting, suburban Seattle, the mid-1970s. We learn from the outset that a strange plague has descended upon the area's teenagers, transmitted by sexual contact. The disease manifests itself in any number of ways, from the hideously grotesque to the subtle and concealable. But once you've got it, that's it. There's no turning back. As we inhabit the heads of several key characters, some kids who have it, some who don't, and some who are about to get it, what unfolds isn't the expected battle to fight the plague, or bring heightened awareness to it, or even to treat it. What we become witness to instead is a fascinating and eerie portrait of the nature of high school alienation itself. The savagery, the cruelty, the relentless anxiety, the longing for escape, and then the murders start. Well, this is definitely a mature read. Um, there is nudity and things like that within it, but I just absolutely love Charles Burns art style and his use of black and white and shading. So if you're looking for a story that's a little bit eerie and unsettling, this would be the perfect graphic novel for you. My next choice is El Defo by CC Bell. This is a graphic memoir all about Bell's childhood and her experiences growing up hearing impaired. So the title El Defo comes from the superhero alter ego that CC creates for herself when she discovers that her phonic ear hearing aid actually can pick up conversations way outside of the normal hearing range. I just love this book. It's full of funny, embarrassing middle school moments that everyone will relate to, and it's also a really good exploration of how it feels to be different. Next up, I have Young Avengers, and this is Volume 1, Style Over Substance. If you're looking to get into a comic that's more in the classic superhero vein, I think this is a great place to start. Um, when I started this year, I wanted to start exploring Marvel, Marvel comics, and I picked up this one first, and I'm really glad that I did, because it's just so much fun. It's a really diverse story as well, and I had a really great time reading it. Another graphic novel that I absolutely adore is Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. This book is a collection of five different scary stories that all take place within forests. Emily Carroll's art style is so haunting and beautiful, and it just has the ability to give you a shiver up your spine. I bought this book around Halloween a couple of years ago, and it's now become an annual read for me. It's just the perfect book to pick up in the autumn and give yourself a fright. Next is Explore the Hidden Doors. Uh, this series is edited by Kazuki Buishi, who is the creator of the Amulet series, but um, the Explorer series is actually a, a bunch of short stories that are all created around one central theme. So it's all different artists. The Hidden Doors is actually the third in the Explorer series, but because of the format, you can pick up from any book and jump right in and it doesn't matter which one you start with. 
In this one, each of the seven stories revolves around a hidden door in some manner, but they're all totally different and they're all totally exciting. Next up, I have Blue is the Warmest Color by Julie Moreau. So this book follows Clementine, who is a junior in high school, and it starts off with her falling in love with a girl for the first time, and the effects that that has on her relationships with her friends and family. This is a truly beautiful story, and the art style has really stuck with me over the course of the few years since it's been since I've read it, and it's also been turned into a really, really wonderful film. I think the thing I love most about this book is the art style in that the only color in here is blue, so it's completely black and white except for this girl's hair. The story definitely had me crying a little bit, but it was very moving and I definitely recommend you check it out. Next up, I want to talk about Anya's Ghost by Vera Brosco. This is the story about a girl named Anya who accidentally falls in a well, and at the bottom of the well she encounters a ghost. Um, this ghost kind of becomes obsessed with Anya and wants to be her best friend forever, and she means forever. <laughs> this is the perfect blend of a coming-of-age story and a scary story, and it's actually pretty cute and funny as well. It deals with all of the trials and tribulations of going through high school, but what makes it even more difficult for Anya is she has this ghost following her everywhere. It's a super cute story, and I highly recommend it. So those were just a few of our favorites, but we would love to hear yours in the comments below. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Happy reading, and thanks for being awesome. Bye.